No comment! Sir, what about the ending to The Rising? Mother f What part of no comment don't you understand? Do you understand this? This interview is over! No comment! The f Brian Keane was also unavailable for comment. Welcome back to The Horror Show, brought to you by Project iRadio. I'm your host, Brian Keene. With me, the only person who didn't need something from me at the Scares to Care charity event, Mr. Dave Thomas. I, I come prepared. So, uh, yeah, no, I wasn't bothering anybody. Uh, it's good to be back in the studio. It is, yeah. It's been a couple weeks. Yes, it so, has. Yeah. We've got the windows open. Um, you may hear the occasional car drive by or... The locusts. Yes. Uh, the locusts are in full chorus out there today. Yes. But uh, it's too nice not to have the studio windows open. Dungeon Master is not here with us today. He is at his grandparents' house playing Pokemon Go. Okay. Um, but he said to tell everyone hello. This week's show is brought to you by Chills by Mary San Giovanni. Described as true detective meets H.P. Lovecraft, Chills marks Mary's return to mainstream mass market horror. Comes out next month from Kensington. Available for pre-order now in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com. And we thank her for sponsoring this week's show. Um, and it's, again, man, it's nice to be here with you. I've got a few weeks off from tour. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the signings are over. No, no. Uh, in fact, uh, this Saturday, August 6th, uh, Mary San Giovanni and I are signing at the Comic Store in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. From 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, if you live in Central PA, or more importantly, if you live in Philadelphia, uh, that is going to be the closest I get to Philadelphia on this tour. So come out this Saturday. We hope to see you there. Um, and how are you, Dave? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I saw you at Scares the Care, but it feels like it's been forever since I, know. I talked to you. <laughs> That's almost two weeks ago. So. Yeah, I'm I'm all fucked up. Now. I know. Well, you've all the you've been on the road and. Yeah, you know, doing all that kind of Jesus stuff. Jesus, if I've been on the Yeah, road. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how I do it anymore either, dude. <laughs> you, you know, one thing I did fail to do out on the road was wow. get interviews for the show. Well, I honestly was amazed that you've gotten as many as you've gotten because I know from traveling, and I've not done a signing tour, obviously, but uh, I my job used to be going around. I've talked before about I had a bunch of trade shows and, you know, review new talk about new products at trade shows and things so i was you know in vegas a lot and things like that yeah and <laughs> people think well that's not work no it's work trust <laughs> me like first of all just traveling is work yeah you know? it is and if you're driving like, driving is exhausting and after bouncing a while. back and forth between time zones yeah and, uh, jesus yeah i i mean while i was on the west coast i managed to get john skip laura lee Barr, hal bodner we've aired all those already right. um i also got gene o'neill with Michael Bailey and Nick Mamatas. We're going to be airing those in the weeks to come. Um, but this whole second leg, like, um, I was supposed to do Ryan Harding. Oh, wait, let me rephrase that. I, I wasn't going to do <laughs> Ryan Harding. Um, well, he's going, they're, he's going to be disappointed. There are probably a number of fans out there who would have enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, I wanted to get Ryan, uh, but the radiator in my Jeep blew up, and I had to... It's like this podunk fucking town with one garage. Oh, God. And uh, I had to get the guy to fix the radiator. Um, so I didn't make it to Ryan's house. That's I, funny. I have a radiator story to tell you that after later on. Okay. Uh, yeah, remind well, me. Tell me your radiator story now. Oh, well, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, we were uh, up in Allentown. And uh, Phoebe's parents recently moved to like one of these assisted living facilities. Right. Um, so we were going to take the car their car down to where they're living now which is it's about half an hour 45 minutes away i, I don't know exactly how far so we go to the house and we get the car and i'm following her in my car because then we're going to go home 
So we're driving through Allentown somewhere. I, I'm not really familiar with that area. Right. And all of a sudden, she pulls off the road. So I'm like, okay, this is weird. Well, I pull off behind her, and uh, then I see stuff coming out from the hood. Right. So we open it up, and there's a obvious leak in the radiator. We can see it. Right. And there's you know steam, so obviously you can't drive the car. So call the the towing company or whoever. Um, and <laughs> so we're there. It's like a, par- a parking lot to a closed business, like a ceramic tile place or something. Right. Open on Saturday night. I don't think there's a whole lot of ceramic tile sales on a Saturday night. So Probably I see not. why they're closed. So I have camping chairs in my car. So we basically put the chairs on the parking lot, and we have like a little camp out there waiting for the tow truck to show up. <laughs> so I'm always like, this is a good advice. Always have chairs in your car. You never know when you're going to need to sit somewhere. Yeah. So we're sitting there. The tow truck pulls in, and I swear I'm not making this up in any way, shape, or form. Beavis and Butthead got out of the tow truck. Beavis and Butthead. Yes, yes. Looked exactly like him. One dark hair, one blonde. Obviously, had to been enjoying substances at some point during the day because they had that stoner laugh. <laughs> right. And like, you got chairs in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other one, he made a noise like that. <laughs> yeah. So, he was about to show up. So, I get the car hooked up to the thing and we take it to the dealership. And, you know, we drop the car off and then we left and, and went home. So, Monday, Phoebe is taxing me. That uh, they can't find the keys to the car. Oh, shit. Which typically, like, you know, when you go to drop your car at a dealership, there's like a box to put them in or right. something like that. So they weren't in there. The car keys were on the hood of the car. Oh. <laughs> they just... Oh, no. <laughs> in a hurry to get back to Potland, where they apparently came from, they just left the keys on the car. Now, granted, you couldn't have stolen the car because it wouldn't go anywhere. Right. But still, I'm just like, oh, dear Lord. Um, yeah. So uh, that was our little camping adventure in Allentown. I I did not have chairs in the back of my Jeep. <laughs> See, that's that's uh that's a, always a good idea when I, traveling. I had twelve boxes of books for Joe R. Lansdale. We could have built um, like a chair out of those. We though. we could have built uh, a new Jeep out of the amount because <laughs> he was flying to scarcely care from Texas, and I yeah. said, "Hey, Joe, you know, because he sells a lot of oh, books, sure. these things." And I said, "Hey, listen, man, instead of flying all those those books, instead of mailing them to the hotel." Just send them to me, and I'll transport them there. Because I'm driving for this whole second leg right. of the tour. He says, all right, I'll, I'll send you a couple of boxes. Now, a couple of <laughs> yeah, here in the Mid-Atlantic region means two. Yeah. In Nacogdoches, <laughs> Texas, apparently it means 12. Yes. <laughs> so I got a couple of boxes from him, and uh, I, I, I mean, I was loaded down. there, So there was no room for chairs. But then we did get the radiator fixed. But then, you know... Um, I'm driving around state to state. I'm on tour. I thought, well, in Chattanooga, maybe I'll, I'll get Sherry, Sherry Priest, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, just it didn't happen. Um, you know, just we got busy having dinner, and we were having a nice dinner. And, you know, who wants to fuck that up with, with a podcast interview? <laughs> and then, uh, you know, like a week later, I get to Florida. Um, I For a day, I hung out with, uh, you know, Dave Barnett from Necro Publications, Edward Lee, Jeff Strand, Lynn Hansen, uh, a new author, K. Trap Jones. Oh, I know that name, yeah. Super awesome guy. Um, You know, like Ryan and and Shane McKenzie, uh, you know, very much of the the Edward Lee school. Mm -hmm. Um, Really like him. Looking forward to reading more by him. Now... You know, I know we've had Lee and Strand on, but I would have loved to have done Lynn. Wait, let me rephrase <laughs> that again, because um, I don't think Jeff Strand or Lynn would appreciate me saying that. Um, I, 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 I would totally do Lynn. I won't lie. I, I absolutely love her. I, I would, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and Strand, you know, I say that with all yeah, respect. Yeah, I say with all that respect, because I love Jeff, too. Big but, props to yeah. you, brother. <laughs> but Lynn, yeah, is, you know, Lynn is awesome. I would have loved to have interviewed Lynn um, and Dave and, and K-Trap Jones, Um but we were having such a nice day. Right. You don't want to, like, interrupt it. Yeah. Oh, now we have to be serious. I mean, you know, there's a swimming pool, and, and we're eating good food, and all of us just, we, yes, Max, we hear you. Max is saying hello Max. to the listening yeah. audience. You know, we are just having such a nice day, and I, I didn't want to be the guy that turns it into business, right. you know? So, I, and then it scares the care. We were supposed to get Michael Berryman. Joe Lansdale, Jonathan Jans, Ronald Malfi, D. Alexander Ward, Christopher Rufty. But by then, my voice was shot. I mean, you heard me. I, you were. I was talking like this. Well, I, I, I will freely admit, I should have prepared ahead of time. I, of course, don't think of this until 
at at scares the cares. I should have prepared every time like questions for some of them. Now some of those people I like I would not interview Joe Lansdale on my own. This is not going to happen because right. I would just sit there. It's Joe Lansdale. <laughs> you know, I would have anything to say. You know, <laughs> and, and and but I should have prepared for like Jans and a couple others because. I should have realized in my brain you were going to be exhausted, which you absolutely were. I was honestly, I was worried about you all weekend. Really? Yes, because you were worn out. I was. Yeah, and then you got to be at scares and all that craziness, which I'm sure we'll get to later here in the show. Um, so I was concerned. I should have just got prepared, and I apologize to you and to the listening audience. I should have prepared to to do interviews on my own to at least we've gotten some interviews although uh, apparently uh jans who i really want to talk to and who's again one of the nicest people on earth um he will be in our area my area more in october yes him jonathan jans and paul tremblay are doing yeah. a convention in washington dc i, I think, think it's in arlington yeah. arlington okay. yeah as he said i forget where but it's in the dc area yeah so uh, we're i think it's that one that mamatas and i went to a couple years ago uh john scalise he was a guest Oh, and okay. Yeah, I don't remember what that I was. Drove down yeah, to the, I don't remember. It's it's a, like a sci-fi con. Yeah, I don't remember the name um, of it, but I remember when you did that. Yeah, but well, we'll get him then. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try to get it. Here's the thing. It, it's scares it cares. I, I realize you know it's a charity convention, but it's also work for you. It is. <laughs> you know, because you're there and you 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 help with the convention, you help with the charity. And you have to sign books and talk to people and stuff. So you're like busy all day, right? <laughs> yeah, because that dealer's room is open for like ten to seven or something like that on Saturday. Well, I'll tell you what, you're not wrong. Yeah. Um, I was exhausted. Yeah. You know, I've been traveling for two. Well, yeah, just traveling wears you out. <laughs> and uh, yes, I am on the board of directors for the convention. Um, in fact, next year I inform the board. I do not. The the board has always had me sit in the celebrity room. Um. Which is, you know, is awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. But I told him, next year, I don't want to be in the celebrity room. I just want to wear the black staff shirt like the rest of the board of directors and just help run the convention. Um, you know, if, if somebody wants to walk by me and say, hey, Brian, can you sign my books real quick? I'm happy to do that. I'm mm -hmm. always happy to sign your books, take a photo. Absolutely. But I'm not going to bring books for sale, and I'm not going to be bound to a table all weekend. Um, I'm more useful... I believe, you know, mobile and on the floor and putting out fires. Not that there's a lot of fires. Right. Ninety nine point nine percent of our guests are awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it will also allow me to not nearly die of exhaustion. <laughs> I, you know, I, I did, I did get some breaks. Um, Joe and Karen Lansdale and Mary and I just had a, a great time riding around in my Jeep and just sitting there behind the table talking. Um, I mean, I love Joe. It's no secret. I love that whole family. Yeah. Um, but he, he gave me a real good talk. I'm not going to repeat any of it on the air, but he, he, uh, he helped me finally come to terms with Jesus and pick and, uh, where I'm at in my career and really gave me some insight, uh, to quit second guessing myself. And it's not even that I asked him to do these things. I, he, Joe, man, he can just he can look at you and he can fucking see what's going on. Yeah, with you. oh, so, okay. yeah. And uh, and then Friday night, Mary made me go to bed instead of staying up drinking with everybody. And I'm glad she did that because I think I would have died had she not. <laughs> but uh, good job, Mary, because you know you were. I think I even said to you one point, like you need to go to just not hang out with people. Or I don't remember. I thought I did. Well, she, she yeah, yeah. You you'll notice Friday night right after me and Brian Smith had our. Right, you, you were gone, yeah. You know, everybody goes out that one exit door. Yeah. Mary grabbed me by the hand and torpedoed me towards that side door. Right. Which leads right to the elevator. Yeah. And I'm like, are we going to have the sexy time? And she's like, no, you're <laughs> no, going, going to sleep. sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad she did that. But let's talk about Scares of Care. I guess first let's talk about some of the news that was announced at the event. Oh, now, yeah, yeah. There's now, some, some things happened. Yeah. Now, you know, all of this has since ended up on the Internet. But, you know, for those who don't have time to surf, we will recap it for you. Yes. Um, Movie-wise, there was a lot of bud buzz for the new Blair Witch sequel, but we will get to that later in the show. Um, it was announced at Comic Con. It was also announced at Scares That Care. Right. So very smart by them to hit Absolutely. those posts. I don't know if they have had anybody officially from the studio or the film there. 
I don't um, think so. If so, I didn't meet them. But I was talking to our uh, Blair Witch expert, Matt Blasi. Oh yeah, which he really is a Blair Witch oh, expert. Is, I'm not been, joking. He's been writing. A he's book writing a book about the Blair Witch, and yeah. he does tours of the the woods. Like Burkittsville. And, yeah, Burkittsville. So he, he really knows a lot about it. So uh, and he did not mention that. I'm sure if somebody was there. He would have said, "Oh, yeah. blah 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 is here." Right. So yeah. But uh, yeah, but we'll talk about that on its own. Yeah. Um, the other big buzz, I think, book wise, uh, was Jedi Summer by John Bowden. Um, I think the full title is Jedi Summer and the Magnetic Kid. Something like that, yeah. But I just call it Jedi Summer. Yeah. Um, now, you know, John, he's been kind of under the radar. You know, he started out with Shock Totem. Uh, he released Dominoes, a couple other things here and there. But Jedi Summer, uh, which is out now in paperback and I believe digital from Postmortem Press, every writer I talk to at the convention that knows their shit has either read it and was raving about it or has heard nothing but good things about it and wants to read it. Um, I brought home a copy. I have not yet had a chance to start it because um, I'm, I'm working my way through Richard Lehman's Funland, rereading it for, uh, well, I, I guess it's public. I'm writing the afterward to the new edition of Funland. Oh, so, right, yeah. Um, but it's next on my list. Um, so those were the, the big buzz. Um you know, some surprising news. Uh, our fellow co-hosts here on Project I Radio, Armand Rosamilia and Mark Tufo, uh, revealed that their popular Arm and Tooth podcast has officially come to an end. Uh, this was revealed at the at Scares the Care. Um, apparently, it's amicable. It's you know, there's no nothing insidious right. here. Uh, but they'll both be seeking out new individual endeavors. Um, you know, I'm personally, I'm sad to see it end because I do enjoy their show. But oh, you know yeah. what? Yeah. It's good news for us. Dan. Absolutely. I won't lie. <laughs> we are no longer the second most popular show on the Project I Radio Network. That's right. Uh, we are now number one. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bow down, bitches. I think uh, now is the time we should call Jess and renegotiate our contract. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will refrain from commenting on this topic. <laughs> Let's see. What else? Um. John Urbansick revealed that all all of his backlist is coming back into print over the next year. So yeah, that's, that's crazy, really cool. You know, uh, Sins of Blood and Stone, Breath of the Moon, you know, that stuff's been mm -hmm. impossible to find. Absolutely. Um, what else? Fucked. Yeah, I was going to say, if you didn't get to yeah, it. Yeah, Fucked. This is by, quite an announcement here. By Brian Keene and Brian Smith, a yeah. collaborative novel. Um, <laughs> which started as... <laughs> Let's call the book fucked, and then we'll come up with a plot to go around it. Uh, and we have a we have an awesome plot, I think. Um, it, without giving spoilers, it, what's the one thing I do really well? Apocalyptic end <laughs> yeah, of the world stuff, yeah. right? And what's the one thing Brian does really well? Crazy women, right? Right. So it, it's it's one of my post apocalyptic settings, and one of his crazy chicks. And uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sold. Yeah, yeah it, it, this guy, he's like, he thinks he's the last person on earth, which sucks, but it sucks really for him because you know he's never found his soulmate, he's never found that true love, and he's just about to kill himself, right? And then this crazy punk rock goth chick steps out of the woods or right. whatever, and uh, he's saved, right? No, he's fucked. He's fucked. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because a month later he's like, "Oh my god, how how do I get rid of this chick?" You know, <laughs> so uh, that'll be out uh, winter twenty seventeen from Thunderstorm Books and Deadite Press. Um, our boy Mike Lombardo had a very big weekend. He uh, did. The trailer for "I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday" uh, debuted Thursday night before Jaws, and uh, then it was played throughout the weekend. Um, a select group of Scares That Care attendees actually got to see a full screening right, of yeah. White Doom's Day. Um, I did not because I'm the executive producer and I gave my seat to someone else. Yeah. But hey, you know, a um, lot of buzz. Yeah. Uh, also, the trailer for The Naughty List. Uh, yeah, that's right. That got shown for that the first time. too. Got a lot of applause, a lot of laughs. Um, fans were stopping by the table all weekend telling me how excited they were to see Tony and Vince in the flesh. So, yeah, big weekend. Yeah. What What were your thoughts? What were some of your favorite moments? Tell me stories, Dave. Um, <laughs> my favorite moment was uh, 
getting moved by the hotel. No, I lied. That was not fun. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear about this. Yeah, I I was not exactly pleased with the hotel. Um, I, there's a lot of one hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing going on there, apparently, with especially with reservations. We made a reservation whenever they went up last year. Okay. For Friday and Saturday night. And then later on, we added a Thursday. Okay. And when we added the Thursday, we said, can you just tack this on to the existing reservation so we don't have to switch rooms? Oh, yeah, no problem. So we get there, and I'm checking in, and the woman's like, type, 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 you know, whatever they're doing, they're doing. And um, she's like, oh, there's a two, you have two reservations. So obviously they never changed it in the system like they said they were going to. Right. And I'm like, yeah. And I, she goes, oh, well, I need to reprint your keys because I only made this key for Thursday. And obviously, you're going to stay in the same room. I'm like, yeah, that would be great if we can. Because it, it, we thought maybe we have to move, which isn't a big deal. But, okay, so we got the new keys. They're good. She's like, oh, no, you guys are good for the weekend. Saturday morning, we get a phone call. You guys need to move. Wow. <laughs> We're like, excuse me? <laughs> and uh, so I'm not going to argue with them. Right. But to me, it made no sense. It's like, why don't you just put the other people in that room but i don't know you know i'm not gonna bicker with right them. but i was kind of annoyed it's like twice we were told you don't have to move you know all we've yeah it was no problem it's taking care of it's taking care of wasn't taken care of right. now i don't work at the hotel perhaps it's very difficult to find the button to merge the reservations together but you know maybe they need some training that's all i'm gonna say so we moved and uh unfortunately the room that we got the second time was it was on the first floor which was great but it's kind of like subterranean almost. Okay. Where the windows are like at the gra- grass level. Right. And it was really like damp and moldy. Right. So guess who had a headache the entire weekend? Um, oh, that would be me. Phoebe. No, me. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I was inches away or whatever you want to say from having a really bad migraine all day Saturday. I'm sorry, man. I didn't know any of this was going yeah, on. Yeah, well, I wasn't going to say anything about it then. Um I had a bunch of people comment to me. I said hello to you. You didn't see me. I, I had to explain to him I'm on my migraine medication because I don't want to get sick. Right. Because I kept thinking if this goes any further, I'll be in my room throwing up all day because yeah. that's what happened. Um, and, you know, <laughs> Phoebe said, you're allergic to this hotel, <laughs> you know, which I thought was kind of funny. But um, I think you're allergic to people. In general. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, 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 dear Lord. Yeah, that's so that, that was your favorite moment. No, that wasn't my favorite moment. Okay. You said a moment, so that um, I have to say, and I, I'm not complaining, but this is this is kind of weird when people that I've never met, I have no idea who they are, come up and talk to me and know who I am. Now I know you've been doing this for 20 years, right. so you're used to this. Right. I'm not because I've never done things where people will know who I am. Right. You know, I've written a ton of magazine articles and stuff, but like pretty much. Nobody has any idea who I am, you know, that, that kind of thing. So for random strangers to come up and, and talk to me is a little disconcerting. But I have to say, everybody that I met was really nice, loves the podcast, thinks you and I are great. They love the interviews. They think Phoebe's funny. You know, they well, just they, they love you. They, they love you. I know. They say a lot of compliments. I'm, I'm not complaining. I they said, like your positive, sunny outlook. Yeah, on well, everything. yeah, exactly. Because I was born with this, so I can't help it. <laughs> no, um, it, it is no, weird. It it was it was kind of odd, but it was cool. I had a woman, and I have to show you her picture later because I don't know this person at all. Okay. Who came running up to me? Where's Ice Bat? Okay. And had her picture taken with Ice Bat, and and we were in the little cafe thing, and it was me and Phoebe and the Blazies and Nikki. Okay. And uh, Michelle Mixel. Okay. So we're all sitting there, and they're all like, "Who is that?" I have no idea. You know, it's just stuff like that happened all weekend. I am going to give a special shout out to Alicia Stamps and her husband, whose name I can't oh, remember. Oh, they were great. They drove up from Alabama to come to the convention yes, to meet did. me and Brian. Yes, they and did. And they were the nicest people. We had a great time hanging out with them all weekend. I hope they come back again next year. And the other two cool people that I met were Matt and Melissa Hayward. Absolutely. They came over from Ireland to attend Absolutely. the convention. Absolutely. And uh, we've just talked about Matt. Actually, Matt is the guy, if you remember, I don't know what episode number was, Zawago, that put the passion phone call to music. Yes. Matt is basically the Eddie Van Halen of Ireland. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. played He's played with uh, Duff McKagan. Yeah. He's played with Jerry Cantrell. Right. I mean, yeah, Matt's a big he's fucking a, deal. He's a big deal, yeah. He's the nicest guy. And Melissa, his sister, is a uh, alternative model. Yep. And she has a hair business, and she makes 
cosmetic. She gave uh, me and Phoebe a box that has like hand creams and things like that, and they're horror related. Like the one thing was it puts the lotions on its skin, hand right. cream, you know that kind of stuff. Right. It's hilarious. Um, I'm not an expert on this kind of thing, obviously. Phoebe loved it. She's like, oh, this stuff smell really, smells really good. And I said to Melissa at one point, because every time I talk to her, she does another job. I don't know when she sleeps. Uh, but uh, she's the nicest and funniest person. But the really cool thing, there's a documentary about her. No kidding. Yeah. I it was that. made for, I believe, uh, t- a TV station over there. But it's called Alternative Model. It's available on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Um, we have not watched it yet. It's, Mary and I uh, have to watch yeah, it this weekend. Yeah. We're, we, we saw because I've seen her different times on Facebook. Goes, oh, my documentary's on tonight. But somebody made a documentary about her. Awesome. So these were like sort of celebrities that were in a miss. But we hung out with them a lot. We hung out. We had dinner with uh, Rachel Alden Deering and, and Jessica, her wife. Which we decided they those two are me and Phoebe, yeah. <laughs> because Rachel and I are like Rachel and I are exactly like yeah. You know, I've said Rachel is me in a much she's, hotter body. She's a misanthrope. Too. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and, and and Jessica's the nice one, and Phoebe's like, yeah, like me, I'm the nice one. Because <laughs> because <laughs> everybody said that it's like she balances you out, doesn't she? I'm like, yes. So uh, we had a good time. Honestly, my favorite times were uh, at night. We would go to that author room, right, and just sit there and talk to people right. and hang out. Um, so, so many, I'd love the trailer for White's Doomsday. I'm not just saying that because you're doing it and Lombardo's my friend. I was blown away how good that looks. Right. I've not seen a frame of this movie yet. I was there one day when he was shooting at a Coop's basement, so I saw some of that being done. But I, I told him, um, I don't want to see this at a time. I want to see it in a the movie theater with my giant bucket of popcorn and the death butter all over it. Right. And I, that's how I want to first see this movie. Yeah. Which I really hope happens. We're working on it. I know. I just. But I was blown away. And it's funny, people that aren't in the horror community, I've had asked me about it. Yeah. I, yesterday, I was up at Knobles, that park in Pennsylvania that I talk about all the time. Um, I was there with my friends Robin LaSalvi that run Theme Park Review, the people that used to do right. coaster tours. And she likes horror stuff. And she's like, that, I was looking for the book that that White Doomsday trailer is based on. Because I wonder, because she loves apocalypse right. stuff. And I'm like, oh, it's a short story. I'll find out what collections in. Right. And she's like, that looks really good. When's that coming out? She just asked me all sorts of questions about it. So, well, Melissa. It, yeah. Um, Alyssa. <laughs> I, Alyssa, yeah. I, am, I am working on trying to find a distributor. Yeah. Um, and Mike is getting ready to start entering it in some film festivals. Um, if I don't find a distributor before the festival circuit, we'll certainly find one. I would Once think so, yeah. Festival market. yeah. So you'll be able to see it soon enough. So um, um, obviously the other thing that was really cool at Scary Cares was the Brian Smith wedding. Oh, yes. And, and Jennifer. Yep. Um, Jennifer and Phoebe, like, instant best friends. They, they loved it. And her family, a bunch of her family was there. I don't yep. know if you met them at oh, all. Oh, yeah. They were really her, cool. Her mom. Her mom her is mom great. Awesome. Yeah, I think Mary got a little jealous of me. Yeah. Her mom, <laughs> her mom, we hit it off quite well. Yeah, they, we were just like hanging out. There was like that little separate bar where we were hanging out Thursday night. Yeah, we were sitting there on Friday, and this is the other complaint I have about the convention. If you prepaid for a ticket, you shouldn't have to wait an hour long line to get in, which they've already addressed and said they're going to take care of that. Yes, next we week. have. Yeah, so that's there fine. was a reason that happened. I know it was I, beyond it's, our control. No, that's understandable. But, but yeah. and like I said, it's already been addressed. I mean, I'm a huge fan of this convention. You know this. And I love the charity, and I like Joe and all the people involved. And what I really like about it is if there's something that goes on and you say something to them, they address it. Yes, it's not will. just like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of it and just blow you off. Like, no, they're they're on top. We, of have, it. we have a motto. It's yeah. Joe's motto. It's been passed down to each of us on the board of directors, and it gets passed down to all of our staff and our volunteers. And the, the motto for the weekend is make it right right now. Yeah. And we all adhere to that. No, it's, you know. So we were sitting there waiting for the line to die down. And Jennifer and her mom and her aunt or somebody else. Was yeah, like, her aunt. They, yeah, they came over and started talking to us. And they're like, oh, do you want to get with us? I'm like, wow, just met me. <laughs> Have you not heard the stories? <laughs> we're like, no, we're going to go in the convention. You know? So they, they went out. We were invited. To, we got invited to dinner a lot. But we were always either eating or already ate or <laughs> something yeah. like that was going on. So Look at you being a celebrity. Yeah, no, it's. I had, like I said, I, I liked it, and Phoebe loved the attention. Alicia Stamp brought a mini ice bat for me to sign. Oh, yes. And also had Phoebe sign it, yeah. which she was, like, ecstatic about. Um, again, I can't say enough of it. They were so cool to hang out with. Yep. And she's like, I, I can't think of a name from the Stern Show, but, like, the guy that was, like, the expert on the show that knew everything. Oh, uh, Mark Spriggan? Yeah. The guy yeah. that runs Mark Spriggan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. She's our Mark Spurrier. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, she like knows everything about the show. Though. On episode 27, you guys said this. I'm like, I don't even remember doing episode 27. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, she knows all about the show. She knows stuff that we said. I'm like, this is actually really cool that, you know, never we ever question, we know to ask. Right. You know? But, uh, yeah, they, they were great. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, you know, Joe Lanzo's there. He's always fun to talk right. to. Um, I spent some time with Weston and Yvonne. West and Oaks, Yvonne Navarro. Right. West and I have not seen in almost 10 years. And Yvonne, I don't even remember the last time I saw her. It was like a long time ago. Right. So we spent time with them. They're, they were absolutely fun. And obviously Phoebe hasn't met a lot of these people before. So, right. um, you know, she was actually nervous to go talk to Joe Lance. I'm like, just go tell me. Like, I'll happen Leonard. He'll be happy. Did she get to talk Yeah, to she him? went over and yeah. talked to him. She was like, oh, he's so nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she has not read any of his books. Yeah. Because there's oft, often animal deaths in them. But she loved that show, Happen Leonard. Right. So I'm like, well, go tell him that, you know. So yeah, she she met him. You should give her a night they missed the hard show. Yeah, or uh, Steel Valentine. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, she asked one day. She goes, "Do you Joe Lansdale? Like, what should I read?" And I'm like, "Well, night they missed the heart. Oh wait, no, that's not gonna work. Steel Va- No, that's not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> so. I don't, I don't, I have to go look because I, I was married a long time ago and somebody took a lot of my Lansdale books. So I don't even know which ones I have and don't have at this point. Yeah. I have to go organize my books. But, um, any event, so I'm trying to think anything else that went on. Uh, we discovered an amazing cheese. Oh, we didn't actually discover. Rachel and Jessica discovered it and told us about it. An amazing cheesesteak place in Williamsburg. Oh, yeah? It's called Rick's Cheese Shop or Rick's Cheesesteak. I meant to bring the flyer with me. Um, blow, we were both blown away. Yeah. I love cheesesteaks, um, and it was seriously one of the best ones I ever had. No kidding. Yeah, it's a family business. Um, the woman, and I don't remember her name, that owns the shop. Was found out we were scares of cares, and then talked to us for like forty five minutes because she was over there Saturday night. Yeah, and I guess uh, I believe they. And I, if I get the story wrong, I apologize. But somebody took a cheesesteak to Kane Hotter. I believe so. Yeah. Yes. and he took one bite, and he's like, "This is the greatest thing ever." And he signed something for them. I don't, I don't remember what it was. She was telling us about it. So she went over Saturday night with meeting different people. Yeah, and uh, she's like, "Maybe next year we'll deliver." And I'm like, "Please." <laughs> and deliver late because like I'm hungry at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, buy when a no vendor food. table, set up a, an oven or something. Yeah, you she's know? like, well, she's. I think she said that she's like, I wonder if they let us sell food in the hotel. I'm like, I don't know if they'll let you Actually, do that. Actually, I, I yeah. don't think banqueting yeah. will. Allow yeah, it. I don't think they'd allow that. But uh, certainly, if they deliver next year, but I'm telling you, if you're there next year, we already said, oh, we're coming back here multiple times right. because it was unbelievably good. And the people there, like I, I don't remember, it was her and her husband that worked, you know, on the place. They were the nicest people, and they were really into the charity, and they're into horror right. and, and stuff. So that that was really cool. Well, it will be there next year. Right. Um, it's going to be the same weekend. Um, it was announced last week. The hotel yes. sold out in 48 hours. Yeah, I I, I um, got my room the second it went live, and now, I told everybody I know get your room now because yeah. it's going to sell out. Now, once again. You know, and we got a whole year to remind you of this. (laughs) Yeah. Just because the hotel is sold out, that doesn't mean you can't attend. There are dozens, literally dozens of hotels within walking distance. You don't even need a car. Right. Um, And there's a complete list of them if you go to the Scares That Care Weekend Facebook page and click the Files tab at the top. Scroll down. You'll see a list of alternative hotels or alternate hotels. Click that. And... All of them are right there. Or, you know, there's a thing called Google that you can use. Um, I will tell you this. You know, I, I can't speak to the the movie celebrities because we haven't even begun right. to look at who we're booking for next year. But I've already got my author slate finished. I, I'm going to pitch it to the rest of the board this weekend, as a matter of fact. But if, if you're a fan of horror fiction... You don't want to miss next year. Yeah, that's I, all I'm gonna say. Oh yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna endorse this because I know who you're talking about. You want to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. If you yeah. like horror, you want you, you to go. Kick yourself in the ass. Yeah. If you don't. Yeah. Um. No, I. You know, I. You're right. I was tired. I was exhausted. Uh, but I did have some fun moments. Um, obviously performing Brian Smith and Jennifer Smith's wedding ceremony yeah. was a highlight for me. Um, that's the third wedding I've performed now. Um, you know, uh, I did, uh, 
two friends of ours, their children play with Dungeon Master, and you know, I, I, they're they're hippies, modern day hippies, and and they wanted to get married out in the woods in a non religious ceremony. Yeah. I was happy to do it, um, and then I married a gay couple. I was very happy to do that, and uh, you know, now I got to marry one of my best friends. Yeah, no, it was really um, cool. You know, your uh, little your speech or whatever you call it that you yeah that was really good. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was really good. I, I really liked it. You almost made me. They almost made me cry, and Phoebe totally lost it. Yeah. yeah so. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. It was funny. Um, <laughs> we were ready to begin. Uh, you know, Jonathan was uh, playing his violin. Right. And uh, yo, hey, thanks to him for that. Yeah. He by the way, that guy is not only extremely oh, talented. I love him. He is like one of the coolest. I unfortunately didn't get a chance to talk to him as much as I wanted to. He's amazing. He's man. a producer in Nashville. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, he just finished uh, doing something with Jewel. Yeah. Yeah. He know? was talking about that. Yeah. Um. But. I love him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so he's up there playing violin, entertaining the people, and John Urbansik, uh volunteered to be their wedding photographer, and he's snapping photos, but we have no bride, no groom. <laughs> so I go looking for them, and uh, I find Jen's mom, and I'm like, where the hell are they? It's showtime. Oh, they went out for one more smoke. <laughs> 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 so we go out, and we get them, and... We all come walking into the, the promenade area there, and Jen and Brian both, they do this simultaneous, because <gasps> I don't think they were anticipating that many people. There were a ton of people there to watch this. I don't um, know how many, but there were a they lot. They say the promenade will hold 1,000 people. Um, there were at least 500 people there. There were, there were quite a few. Yeah. Um, that, that reminds me, is... Have they released yet how many people attended the show? Um, we're going to go over and get our final tally this weekend. So This is just my thing. Not like, I can't estimate a crowd size. Really. It seemed to me like there were even more people there Friday than there were Saturday. I don't know if that's just the way the crowd I, was dispersed. I don't know. But it's hard for me yeah, to, to gauge. I, I, that was um, just me and Phoebe's thought. It was like... When we were walking around Saturday, it didn't seem... I mean, it was, there was a ton of people there, but it didn't seem like it's crazy. Well, what you have to remember, Saturday is a longer day. Right. So it's, it's more, more decompressed. Yeah. Um, and also, Friday, there's that crazy rush to get all the signatures that you want to get. Yeah. And then Saturday, people sleep off their benders. <laughs> um, I, there was a, it was obviously a, a decent-sized crowd. Yeah, I mean, but no, it was a lot of people at the wedding. Oh, yeah. Um, and then... Uh, Another good moment out, you know, we were talking about Lansdale and hanging out with him. Um, <laughs> I've known that man years and years now, but he still once in a while makes me go fanboy. He just, you know, he's like, yeah, let's see if I can do my Joe. He says, uh, you marry ought to come out and visit us next year. So, you know, yeah. you have that moment of, yeah. holy shit, Joe Lansdale just invited us to come visit his, his that, home. That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then you, you say, get the fuck a hold of yourself, King. Yeah. You know, it's just Joe. Yeah. Um, but he had, a, he had a copy of The Lost Level. Now, anyone who's read The Lost Level and has read my afterwards knows that I got the impetus to do that book after uh, reading Joe's Under the Warrior Star. Right. Which is also another Lost World novel. So, uh, Saturday morning, we're down there at the table, and I'm getting our books set up, and I'm not really paying attention to what's going around me. I'm like, you know, in, right. in work mode. In zone, yeah. And Joe and Mary are sitting nearby, and they're just, they're shooting the shit. And uh, I'm not, again, I'm not paying attention, but my ears prick up because I hear Joe tell Mary, yeah, I was upstairs reading Brian's Lost Level. That's pretty good. <laughs> and I'm like, instant erection. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And he says, I think it might be better than mine. And so I'm like grabbing onto the table now because I don't want to pass the fuck out. Right. And I'm thinking, how do I play this? Yeah. You know, do I, do I gush? Do I say, oh, nonsense is not better than yours? I just, I pretended I didn't hear it at all. But the rest of the day, I don't think my feet touched the I, I, you know, I, so, I, that's like probably one of the best compliments yeah, you're ever going to in your life. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, you can't put it on the dust jacket of the fucking book. No, but, but it's But you still, don't need yeah. to. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, also Saturday morning, because, you know, I get up early. Right. You know, I'm, I'm up at these things at six o'clock to start getting work done for the show. Um, and there's never anybody awake. 
uh, one of my pre-readers, Mike, nicknamed Psycho, he was there early. So he and I are, are talking for a little bit. And then here comes Michael Berryman. He's up early, too, looking for breakfast. And the three of us just end up standing there over breakfast talking about ancient aliens and theories about outer space and and the the military secret space programs like 45 minutes now i've known mike for years and i know i can have these conversations with him and unlike you he won't call me paranoid pete but for uh, when i say mike i mean mike berryman not yeah. psycho um <laughs> psycho's reaction was great because you could see him standing there trying so hard not to geek out that he's talking about the shit with Michael Berry. I mean, he's he's fucking vibrating. He's so excited, but to his credit, he kept it cool. He didn't go fanboy on him, so that was that was neat. Um, probably getting hit on the head by Kane Hodder. <laughs> um, did I tell you about that? <laughs> yes. But... Uh, so Sunday night. Okay, now Sunday night the show's over. That's when we count the money. Okay. Um, and you know what happens is the board of directors all to get to, all get together in a secure location. I'm not going to say where. And we have all the cash from the show and all the credit card receipts. And we sit there, and we count. And then the next person double counts. The next person triple counts. You know, we right. figure out how much we can immediately donate to our families. Um, so we're doing the count, and we get a call that somebody is down in the bar trying to run up a bar tab. And saying, he's he's one of us. <laughs> Fuck this, <laughs> because we're all upstairs in the room. Right. So you know, Joe is tired. It's the end of the week, and I'm like, I'll go down and deal with it. So I go down to the bar, I deal with it. Sure enough, the guy is not one of us, you know, and it, it all gets taken care of. But Kane is down there, and Sid Hag is down there, and they're just having a good old time. <laughs> and the barmaid had left this clipboard lay there on the bar and I'm sitting next to Kane you know mm -hmm. and uh, just out of nowhere I glance away for one second and Kane snatches up the clipboard and smashes me <laughs> just smashes me over the head with it's it it's like it's big time wrestling <laughs> I mean like like for real yeah no. <laughs> and my ears are ringing and good lord I grab the yeah, I don't want to pass out because you know I'm Brian fucking Keen yeah. but <laughs> So I grabbed the table. I'm doing everything I can to keep myself upright. But this shit knocked me silly. Yeah. And I look at him and I go, why? <laughs> and he laughs. He goes, because you're Brian fucking Keith. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to see if the legends are true. I'm like, what legend that you could hit me over the I'm yeah. not a Hollywood stump man. I mean, like, apparently you have a head made of iron or something. You know, yeah. there's a legend I can drink a truck of bourbon. But yeah. So it was funny, and he meant well. It's King. You know, yeah, right? I know exactly. Yeah, it's, you but can't get mad with the guy. <laughs> and, you know, and now, I, now yeah. I can say, hey, I got beat up by Kane. Exactly. Hunter. I like to tell yeah. about it. But I, you know, for the record, I love Kane. I know a lot of people. You know, um, I mean, you see it online. You don't see it in person, but you see these fucking trolls online. They they talk about the the celebrities that do the convention circuit. Um, you know, I, I can't think of a celebrity that's been more supportive of this charity than Kane Hodder. Oh, he's, he's amazing. And, yeah. you know, the, the dude is fucking awesome. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. I have to say that uh, when you're... Just, I mean, you know, you're getting the Kane Hodder show. Right. But... Just randomly online, just seeing pictures. By far, he is the most, at least this year, the, the most excited. Like, I saw so many pictures of people with Kane Hodder. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah like, he's approachable. So he's down many, to earth. So many people were like, Dude, this is why I came to the show. And, you know, they had people that signed machetes. And just, yep. like, he was he was obviously a, a huge hit. I don't collect autographs or anything like that. So yeah. I just, I kind of just, I, I don't want to be rude, but I just kind of ignore the celebrities because it's, it's not my thing. Um, right. So... But uh, they, obviously, we're all very popular because that room was always packed. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's he's a really good guy. Man. Yeah, nah, yeah. He's, a, he's a great guy, so, and he does good things with the charity. So. Props to him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I do have a regret from the show. Okay. Um, you mentioned Matt and Melissa Hayward. Yeah. Um, you know, I I all summer long I've been looking forward to meeting them in person and really getting some time to just hang out, and I got no time to hang out. Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, we already talked. You know, I was exhausted from the tour. 
plus, you know, as we said, I'm on the board of directors for the con, so I'm, I'm busy and, working. And at, you're working, you know, selling books, right. and signing. Well, the other thing was the booze. Um, <laughs> you know, every time they had the, the little group, it was Matt and Melissa, Rachel, Jessica, Lombardo, and Stephen Kozlowski. Right. And every fucking time I saw them, they're drinking. Yeah. Now, I'm not judging. Lord knows I've enjoyed a few drinks in my in my time, but you know, let's face it, they're younger than me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I can't do that. I can't drink like that anymore, man. You know. Um. So it was a little daunting to stay up and hang out with them. Uh, you know, you ever see Sam Kinison's Family Entertainment Hour or hear the audio from it? I vaguely remember this. He, he has this yeah. routine. Now, say what you will about Sam Kinison. Uh, I only see me, good things. Me personally, <laughs> yeah. him and Bill Hicks yeah. or, and Carlin are yeah. it for me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Kinison, he, he has this bit in that stand-up routine of, you know, about how People think celebrities, especially celebrities who are known to party, uh, have this superhuman ability to ingest, you know, vast amounts of cocaine and alcohol. You know, he, he talks about, you know, everybody's at the party in Hollywood and they've all got these little two inch long lines of coke. And then Kinnison walks in and is like, oh, Kinnison's here. Yeah. Lay out his line and yeah. it's two feet long. And right. here's Sam snorting up. Okay. You know, because he doesn't want to let people down. Yeah. It's the same with me. Mary and I tallied up the amount of bourbon I've been given on this tour, <laughs> starting from uh, wherever the fuck it was we signed in Pennsylvania, me, her, and Kozanowski, uh, okay, yeah. out to the West Coast, out to the South, south. up the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Take a guess. How many bottles of booze do you think I've been given total? I'm going to say 60. You're close. Yeah. 58. Okay. I... 58. Yeah. There's, just, there's, there's no way. You could put me and Keelan Patrick Burke and, and, and Bob Ford and Kane Hodder and Sid Hang all together and You're we, not we drink still all couldn't drink yeah, all that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but people expect it from me. So that's why Mary made me go to bed Friday night. Yeah. She knew <laughs> she knew that I was I was give the people what they want, give them access and but more importantly, she knew I really wanted to hang out with, with Matt and those guys. Right. And she knew I couldn't fucking take it. Yeah. So she made me go to bed. I'm glad she did, because like I said, I would have probably been dead. But, yeah. You know, I finally did get a chance to to hang out with them Sunday. We all went out to eat. And it was nice, but it's a whole big group. You know? Yeah, it's and hard to talk to people. It's hard. Um, and I'm exhausted. I, I think I may have inadvertently offended Melissa. Oh. You know, she's she's got... Lots of tattoos. And you know me, I'm fascinated by tattoos. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, you know, something like, my God, you've got a lot of ink. You know? Yeah. And, and I started to explain, you know, I'm from the generation where, you know, you were told, don't get any on your arms or your legs. You'll never get a job. Right. And I, I've never, you know, I have tats, but none of them are where you can see them. Visibly. Right. Um, and then I, I wanted to follow that up. I had a longer point to make, but then Lombardo, I forget <laughs> what he did, but he distracted me. And I realized, like, four days later, I'm like, Jesus, the way that conversation ended, I probably sounded like, you know, cranky old Cranky dude. old man, yeah, which you're and not. So, I, I, I don't think she probably I know Melissa listens. Yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry if I came yeah. off that way. Um, um, and, and apologies to her and Matt. Yeah. Both. I, it's probably... It's not probably. It's absolutely my biggest regret from this entire summer. I I told Matt when we were leaving, I was sad. I'm like, we never got a chance to talk about guitars, you yeah. know. And it's just like, you know, they they both said come to Ireland to, to me and to me and Phoebe. So right. we're like, yeah, at some point that's gonna happen because we've never been there. Right. I've never been there, and Phoebe's never been to Europe at all. So um, we'll definitely do that. We will come over and visit. And hang out with you guys, um, and they, I think they're coming back again next year. They are, which I hope they, I hope they do. Yeah. And uh, no, they were they were a ton of fun to hang out with. I do have to say too, and this is a little more serious topic. Um, I had a lot of people talk to me about the episodes that we did about world horror and uh, that the stuff that was going on. RJ Cavender and, and, and yes, yeah, all that, all that stuff, the sexual assaults yep. and, and the fraud and all that 
And every person said, thank you for doing those shows. Yep. They could not have been easy to do, but they were very complimentary to you and me. And I pointed out to the people, it was mostly you, because um, you're more involved with that area. Like, right. obviously, I've never been a, a member of World Heart, yeah, or not World Heart, uh, HW. HW. Yeah, I get a mix of yeah, that. Yeah, very yeah, important. We, yeah. we need to yeah, pause I know. and make that distinction. I mean, two separate things. They're two separate things. I apologize for being an idiot, but I am an idiot. Um, but everybody, to a person. They talked about it, they thanked us both for doing those and, you know, said this is the kind of stuff that needs to be reported on and yep. people need to know and it shouldn't get swept under the rug. And I especially have to point out Jonathan Jans and Ronald Malfi both had really nice things to be saying about our show and both talked to me, especially Jans at length, right. about all the, the things that we, we talked about there. And I, of course, you know, talked about, because this is really my first experience with it, you're, you're used to this too. The amount of bile online oh, yeah. that we had to take from doing that, and I, you know, I had to come to the point of view because at first I was really upset and mad and pissed right. off that I go on Facebook and see a hate thread about me that, right. from people that I don't even know. But uh, like I said, I came to the conclusion that I can't help what people think about me, which I always had. Just don't call me a liar because that's that's what pissed me off. Right. You know, so we everybody that talked to me about this. You know, and you know I've talked about this too. Um, all I can say is, is when stuff like that comes up, we're not going to shy away from it. Yeah. No, we're not. Yeah. Fair warning. Yeah. And uh, no, I agree. I all summer long, every signing I've done, every appearance I've done, at least one person at every stop has brought that up mm. and thanked us. But it goes beyond that. Um, you know the the narrative out there on the internet uh, what they would like you to think is that you know oh the HWA is completely against everything we said um, horse shit yeah <laughs> I have had dinner with or drinks with at least three HWA board members this summer now I'm not going to say who okay I'm going to give them their privacy but these are the board members okay who every one of them individually in private said thank you guys for doing that show and keep it the fuck up. So, you know, yeah, we had some people go after us, you know, Mercedes Yardley. I, I don't think we should not 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 name these people. No, I, I think we should remind people who you know, who Mercedes Yardley said we were liars, so we didn't check our facts. Uh, you know, Patrick Freebold calling us bullies. Fuck you. You know, once again, in case you in case you think we forgot, we did not. Um, and yeah, as you said, we're gonna keep reporting on stories like this when they arise. Yeah. Um, somebody needs to. You know. That's what, that's what a lot of people said. They said nobody else was talking about this stuff, yeah. and people knew it was going on, but nobody was saying anything. And I also had, and I'm not gonna say their names. A couple of women, like you know, more than two thank us for talking about the sexual harassment at yeah. conventions and stuff because they're like this stuff goes on and it's getting more talk now than it used to but this is stuff has been going on for years right and nobody will say anything and they're like thank you for talking about it thank you for bringing it to people's attention and again i'm like if we hear a story like that and we can corroborate this, the facts you know right. we're not just going to go off well, we might go off hack you know, but um, no, but seriously, we you, you know, might. I'm a professional. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You're a professional. I am a professional idiot. So, but no, you know what I mean. Like, you know, it, it's like that story when we have witnesses and, and things. We will talk about these things, and I'm okay with yeah. that. At first, I was like, maybe we shouldn't be doing this stuff. I'll admit, I I when this was all going on, like this is new to me, you yeah. know, because I wrote magazine articles, so I'm not used to controversy. Like maybe like when I get an email, like, Hey, you spelled this wrong or something, but that was about it, you know? Right. And so, uh, this was a little different. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I've decided that, you know, I, I, I will freely admit here in the air. I almost thought about stopping doing the podcast when this was all going on. Right. Cause I was just, I'm like, I have enough stress in my life. I don't need people that out there screaming at me. Right. And I'm like, no, <laughs> We must be doing something right if we're pissing people off. I have found so. over the last 20 years that uh, the louder the naysayers get in regards to what you're doing, the, the 
the, the more sure you can be that what you're doing is right. Yeah, that's kind of the realization I came to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there are always going to be those people. Well, um, you're, you're always there. Are always going to be somebody who's mad at you. you know, like I'm yeah. used to people being mad at me for stupid shit, but this was this just went beyond what I have dealt with in the past. Yeah. So, yeah. well, yeah. I, something else a lot of people have brought up was uh, the whole Sam Hain thing. They thank thank me for us right. doing those shows. I heard I heard some a couple people talk to me about that too. You know, yeah. So and and yes, uh, for the four of you out there who comment every time, yes, we know. It's not pronounced Sam Hain, but that's how the fucking publisher pronounces it. Right. So, you know. Um, <laughs> We're going with what they say. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, bottom line is, you know, if there's fuckery or nitwittery mm-hmm. or malfeasance going on in our industry, we're going to report on it. Yeah, we are. You know, if you don't want us reporting on it, well, then don't fucking do it. Yeah, there, yeah you know. there, there's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> don't involve people more thousands of dollars. We won't be talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's yeah. get to the news. Okay. Speaking of reporting on things, before yes. we do that, I want to remind folks is that lawnmower getting loud? Should we maybe shut your window? I'm going to close this one. Okay. Cause I swear to God that the, the neighbors he are He waits. Like, he waits until, yeah. oh, hey, look, they're, look, recording, they're, they're the recording the podcast. podcast. Time to mow. Right. But, and he was going to try to mow right over top this week's sponsor, which is Chills, the new novel by Mary San Giovanni. It's True Detective meets H.P. Lovecraft, and it's available for pre-order now on Kindle and in paperback at Amazon.com. That's Chills by Mary San Giovanni. So. Speaking of pre-orders, something I pre-ordered a while ago that showed up the other day and I'm not ready yet is uh, Nick Mamatas's I Am Providence. Oh, yes. So I'm that's the next thing I'm going to read. Right now I'm reading uh, Paul Tremblay's new book. Okay. The Disappearance of Devil's Rock. Yep. I'm not done yet, but I think you might be right. Better. It's even better than... I am yeah. blown away. I didn't think it would be possible for him to write a book better than Head Full of Ghosts. Yeah. I was wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, now, I'm curious. You're not a parent. So... Like the Minecraft stuff, did that lose you, or were you? No, I know enough about Minecraft. Okay. And, like I don't have any kids, obviously, but I know a lot of people with kids. Right. And they all play Minecraft. Although I think if he's writing the book today, it would be Pokemon Go <laughs> because yeah, everybody is playing Pokemon Dungeon Go. Dungeon Master is hooked on that. I, I was again, like I was at Canoble yesterday. Everybody I was with was playing the game. Because apparently there's a lot of Pokemon. I gave there. Dungeon Master an option. You know how much he loves doing the show with us. Yeah. Um. This morning I said, "You you want to be on air with me, and Mr. Dave?" And he kind of sighs and he looks down his iPad and I said, "Or do you want to go play Pokemon Go with Papa and Mama?" Yeah, that's what I. So that's where he is today. That's, I, I, you know, that's that's so. good. I, I know there's like people I've seen this online. You're like, Ugh, I can't believe people are playing this stupid game. And it's like, because they were people were asking me yesterday, "Are you playing?" I said, "I don't have time to play this." But I play other games, and I'm all for this. I think it's really cool, and I'm yeah. glad that like people were into it. It's just <laughs> like I, I really think sometimes Phoebe and I are the only people on earth not playing this game. I'm not playing it. Yeah, but it's just it's it's funny. But uh, no, so that that's that that uh, yeah, the Minecraft stuff. I, I do. We'll talk more about it when I'm done. We will. We will. We will do an episode, uh, a spoiler episode. We will. Yeah. And and speaking of uh, Nick and I in Providence, uh, next week's show we'll have that interview with. That's Nick. right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm um, very excited to read this. That should be high ratings because people either love Nick or hate Nick. And Don't I, listen I, either I, way. Yeah, either way they're going to listen. So win for us, <laughs> yeah. especially now that Armin Tuf is done. That's right. So woohoo! Woo-hoo. Ad rates are going up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked earlier about the new Blair Witch. Yes. Um, we had also talked in a previous episode. I think last year we had talked about a a new horror movie from Lionsgate called The Woods. Right. Uh, well, as it was revealed two weekends ago, The Woods is actually a new, previously secret sequel to the horror classic The Blair Witch Project. Um, that debuts on September 16th, I believe. Yes. Um, it's just called Blair Witch. Um, now, a lot of people think this is a remake. It is not. Mm-hmm. It is a direct sequel to the original. Um, <coughs> no word on whether it will involve Blair Witch 2. Um, Let's hope not. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually like Blair really, Witch. Really, I, I I think the problem with that movie is they tried to tie it into the Blair Witch. I I I don't even think I finished watching it. Yeah, it's just like I don't think the Blair Witch Project the original is the greatest thing ever made, but I really did enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I think his reputation has gotten tarnished only because of all the terrible found footage movies have come in its wake. Right. But I still say the last ten minutes of the original movie is some of the greatest 
10 minutes of any horror movie ever. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I the, agree. And, you know, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil the ending for you. But the last 10... I mean, it's a good movie, but the last 10 minutes are just amazing. Yeah. Um, so... Well, yeah, the, the plot of this one, now, there's not a lot of details. Um, but you remember Heather. Right. The original character. Mm-hmm. Apparently, uh, her brother sets out with a new film crew to discover what happened to his sister. And, you know, then things, things go happen. terribly awry. Yeah. <laughs> and... and uh, you know, it, it looks like it will once again use Carl Edward Wagner's sticks as inspiration. I I don't want to know anything about this movie before I see it, and I'll definitely go see this in yeah. the theater because, like I said, I enjoyed the first one. I don't because I, the first one was like a big surprise, right? Like you didn't really know anything about it, you know, because it was a small budget movie, and right, and, and you know, you just heard. It was, so back then, the internet wasn't as prevalent too, so it was kind of like word of mouth. You're like, oh, this is like you know, it's a creepy movie. So I'm hoping that they don't tell us a lot about this movie before it comes out. Right. So I'm, I'm good with this description. I, I have high hopes. It's, yeah. it's Adam Wingard, um, and it's written by Simon Barrett. Um, and of course, the two of them did uh, You're Next, mm-hmm. which I, I really liked. Mary and I saw that in the theater. I, we re- both really liked it. Um, and they did uh, The Guest, which I have not seen, but I've heard good things about. I have one. Um, so, yeah, September, that comes out, Dave. I, I'm amazed at how they kept this a secret. There's right. a great article. It was in Entertainment Weekly. I'm sure you can find Wait, it online. hold that thought. Okay. Because I have to pee oh. really bad. So do you want to tell the audience about this article while I go pee? Yeah, that's okay. fine. All right. Yeah. So that way you can't tell the audience, no, he's getting up and walking away. He's getting up and walking like away. Like you always do. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, it's live radio. i gotta, I got to narrate things. So anyway, there's a great article in Entertainment Weekly. It was, it was two weeks ago when he made his announcement. I'm sure you can find it on the website. That details all the secrecy and, and steps the studio took to keep this a secret, which in this day and age of the internet, Twitter, Facebook, to keep a project like this a secret uh, with an IP like the Blair Witch, something that's very popular, I am stunned that they were able to do this. That the people that were brought in, and they brought a very few small number of people in to to work on the movie that knew what they were doing. Uh, I'm blown away. I, I, this came out of nowhere. This announcement came out of nowhere. It like surprised everybody. It was the talk of that day at Scares and Cares, uh, especially for Matt Blasey, who, you know, I mentioned before is like a Blair Witch expert. Uh, everybody was talking to Matt about it. You know what he thought, what was going on. Um, but I, how they kept this a secret, I'm just amazed. And if you haven't read that Entertainment Weekly article that goes into detail about that, it's well worth taking your time to read it right it's that's that's kind of the only article i read about this like i obviously this announcement came out of nowhere like yeah you know, everybody was like what 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 blair witch like you know i wish students would do more of this stuff a lot i wish of times, they would too I, a lot of times i feel like by the time the time the movie comes out i've already seen it <laughs> you know what i mean yep. i know everything's gonna happen it's like why well, bother yep. watching at this point i like surprises yep. so or or they release a trailer that says it's going to be one thing, and then when the movie finally comes out, it, it's <laughs> something totally different. You know, like uh, the, the Ghostbusters trailer was pointedly unfunny, but from what I understand, the movie itself is actually quite yeah, good. I um, yeah, or I, Suicide I, Squad, the trailer looks amazing, and <laughs> the movie is absolute shit. I, I was going to ask you about that because you you've apparently seen it. Um, I had zero interest in this movie until the first trailer came out, and I'm like, oh, this might be fun. Apparently, it's not fun. Just watch the trailer. Okay. Yeah. Well, I've seen the trailer. All the so. funny bits are in the trailer. Okay. Yeah, it, it's 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 a mess. Well, it's getting terrible reviews. It's, like, it's brutal. Like, somebody said it's this year's Fantastic Four, and I'm like, oh, man, that's mean. <laughs> I'm, I did not care for Batman vs. Superman. We've talked about that right. on the show. I did not care for Green Lantern. Um, um, Green Lantern, I, I tried to watch that like an HBO one. It, it's not an anti DC yeah. thing. I love Nolan's Batman trilogy, but uh, yeah. this this firmly falls in the camp of, of Green Lantern and, and BVS. Yeah, Green Lantern. Like I said, I I last about twenty minutes of that. Might have been on a plane. I don't remember where I was watching it. Yeah. It was like it was unwatchable. So, so if it's that bad, yeah, it's it's that bad. Oh. But you know what's not bad? What's that? Happen Leonard on the Sundance Channel. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, now we wanted to talk about this. We didn't get a chance to go into detail. Um, but it has been renewed for a second season. Um, I talked a lot about it with Joe at Scares at Care. Um, not anything I can really repeat on the air. Um, but 
Yeah, no, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything he told me that probably not, but that's that okay. I can make public. Um, one thing you know I do find interesting. Um, John Worth has replaced Jim Mickle as showrunner. Now I don't think personally I don't think there's anyone in Hollywood that gets and understands Lansdale's work more than Jim Mickle. Uh, you know maybe Don Coscarelli. Mm-hmm. I mean you know Don he he really gets Joe's stuff too. But you know. Uh, have you seen Cold in July? Absolutely. It's you know, an amazing movie. The best Lansdale adaptation yeah. to date. You know, and of course Happen Leonard season one was as well. Very yeah. faithful, true to the books. Um, now Jim Mickle will still be involved as executive producer. Um, but you know, I'm an executive producer. I mean, you know, what, <laughs> what does that mean? So I do not I don't know. I'm I'm hoping John Worth uh continues that streak. The one know. thing that, that works in the favor of the show still being good is they've done a season already. Yes. So they have a template to work from. Well, and Joe's yeah. involved. And he's Joe's there, involved, He's too. there in the writing room. Yeah, you know? so I apparently... Fact, I think he may be writing an episode this season. I believe so, yes. Yeah. I was about to say that, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say well, that. Well, I, I, yeah. he, he told me that, and I'm thinking, did he tell me that in confidence, or is that public knowledge? But yeah. That's a, I, we'll just say he was there in the writing room. Yeah. We can edit all this out. But we're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's something else people were asking about the show and the editing. And I, I, I've said it before here. We edit almost nothing out yeah, of the show. Here it is, right here. I, unless we say something that's actually actionable, or uh, occasionally people have said kids' actual names yeah, accidentally. We those will get chopped out immediately. Who slipped up and yeah. said his his son's name one time? Right. We chopped that. Yeah. Um, and one time we called Phoebe by her real name, and that got chopped. Well, apparently, there's an episode where we didn't do that because I heard from two people that we left it in. Well, so uh, there you go. There's your Easter egg, folks. Yeah. Start hunting. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm hoping that between Joe's involvement and the first season, which they can look at, you know, I'm hoping this will be okay. Because I love the first season of this show. Yeah. So I'm hoping for second season to be just as good. I don't, I'm, my hope is that John Worth just does like does like Jim Mickle did in season one. Just stay true to the book. Yeah. Just stay true to the book. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Yeah. You know. Because they already have the, the two the two lead actors are absolutely perfect yeah. as, his, as his role. So, yeah. Stick with the book and you'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. You know. It's, it's funny. Um, I mean, it's no secret. Hap. Is very much an autobiographical character for Joe. That's funny um, because you mentioned that because uh, we went to, I think it was Bob Ford. I don't remember who read with Joe. Uh, Weston. Weston. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we went to that reading, and uh, Joe's le- reading a, a, a an article he read. Right. And uh, the Texas Observer. Yes. And about halfway through, Phoebe leans over and goes, "He's hap." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah." Oh, he's yeah. absolutely. Happy. He's absolutely happy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the first time she'd ever seen him read. Yeah, it was interesting to get his take on James Purfoy. Yeah, playing Hap. You know, because basically, I've had that experience. You know, watching Nolan Gould play Timmy. Right, that's you on yeah. the set, and and Timmy was one hundred percent me absolutely. as a twelve year old. So it, it's it's a neat experience. But you know what's not a neat experience in oh. my in my point of view okay in my opinion in your opinion sharknado okay let's get to the meat of this okay show, dave let's do this all right the fourth sharknado movie which debuted last weekend on sci-fi had the weakest ratings in the franchise right sunday's premiere of sharknado the fourth awakens drew a 0.8 rating in adults 18 to 49 uh which basically translates to 2.77 million viewers. Uh, that's down from the 2.8 million for Sharknado 3. Um, the film was directed by Anthony C. Ferrante, who needs to die, with Ian Ziering, Tara Reid, David Hasselhoff, and Ryan Newman reprising their roles, and they also all need to die. Anybody involved with this needs to die. No, I, I know you love shark movies. I know you enjoy Sharknado. Well, we'll get to that when you're done. Because well, you, you mis- have misinterpreted certain aspects here, but we'll talk about okay. it in a minute. I, I, <laughs> Wikipedia tells me. Now, I, you know, I did not watch Sharknado in Fourth Awakens, uh, but Wikipedia tells me that, that the character of Finn has moved to a farm in Kansas where he lives with his mom and his young son. Um, his wife is believed dead after being crushed by the wreckage of the space shuttle. 
apparently there's this this tech guy uh, who runs a company named Astro X, and Astro X has developed a technology that uses radio waves to diffuse tornadoes, leading to the end of the Sharknado phenomenon. Now they could have stopped the movie right there, and I would have applauded them, but no. <laughs> Finn goes to Las Vegas, where there's a shark-themed hotel featuring a giant tank of sharks. And then a sandstorm tornado develops that cannot be diffused by Astro X. And the sandstorm tornado turns into a sharknado. And then becomes a boulder nado. And then a fire nado. And then a lava nado. And then a nuke nado. And uh, apparently one of the characters is an android cyborg thrown in there for good measure. Yeah. And I'll then just the say, end of the movie threatens us with a fifth. I'll just say right now, the movie is unwatchable. Really? It's, it's Hold on. Yeah. Did it, did it, did it. yeah. Because you, you saw on Facebook, everybody assumed you were going to defend it and love it. Well, everybody's wrong. Because you, like, you love shark movies. As, always, as movies. always, people don't know anything about me. I'm shocked. Okay. I'm, I'm stunned. Yeah, well, here's... I the, thought we'd have an argument today. No, here's the deal. Um, I love cheesy, terrible movies. Basically, for me to be entertained by a movie, it must contain one of the following. Automatic weapons fire, explosions, giant monsters, dinosaurs, sharks, Christy Canyon. So This movie <laughs> had all of those things except Christy Canyon. Yeah, I think she needs to be more things. Uh, anyway... Um, so I love big, dumb, cheesy movies, and I will watch these Sci-Fi Channel movies. First of all, let we all know these movies are terrible, okay? But they're usually – what I like is when somebody makes a movie like this about a giant spider or whatever, and they're being serious about it. They're thinking they're making a good movie. Right. And a lot of times they're not, and that's what's funny. That's what I enjoy. It's like a terrible movie. I, I love you know Riff Tracks and Mystery Science Theater, and I love when they take one of these movies and makes fun of it. Um the problem with Sharknado, as opposed to like Shark Attack 3, which I still will go on record as is the greatest movie ever made, because it's hilarious. Um, the people making Shark Attack 3 thought they were making a serious movie. Okay. okay? The people making Sharknado know that they're, they're trying to make a joke slash cult movie. But that's not how cult movies happen. But exactly. That's my point. So, first of all, you just hear the name Sharknado. You need to go back four years when they first did it. You hear the name Sharknado, I'm like... I'm going to watch that because it's like a stupid name and it's like a funny concept. But they, the first one, they kind of tried to sort of make a serious movie, but you could also tell they knew they were in on the joke. Since then, they've basically turned these movies into nothing but celebrity cameos. And in the fourth one, nothing but Comcast product placement. Really? Yeah. There's a ton of random Comcast crap thrown in and I fucking loathe Comcast anyway, so that annoyed the crowd. The, the first movie was like, you could tolerate it. The second one was pretty terrible, but they both made amazing Rift Tracks Live shows. Because, <laughs> like, you know, because Rift Tracks Live did Sharknado 2 last year. It's still one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Every Tara Reid joke killed. Yeah. You know, so, but it's it's one of those things where, the, you know, they, they did the first one, it came out in the summertime, and it happened to be at a time of year when there was nothing going on in the news. So the news latched on to it. It's Sharknado. It's like a funny thing. Right. So the hype got built up for it. And I also say that Sci-Fi has a really good uh, social media team. They're really good at getting their stuff online and promoting it right. and stuff. You know, they did giveaways and stuff. So it kind of developed into this thing, you know. So, of course, they do a second one, and that, that one was really popular. The third one had a ratings drop. The fourth one had a huge ratings drop. This fourth movie, seriously, they put no effort into it whatsoever. It's fucking terrible. Like, there wasn't even anything funny about it. It was just painful to watch. Right. I had it on my DVR. I wasn't even going to watch it probably for weeks. I watched it because you wanted to complain about it here on the show. I'm like, well, I better actually be informed about it. Because honestly, like, they're not entertaining. They're not funny. You know, because right. they're trying, they're trying to make a cult thing. So it's not like watching, you know, like something like Super Gator, which you know Roger Corman made. Roger right. Corman movies are always great. Or Plan Nine. Yeah, because yeah. he takes it seriously. Right. You know, it's it, that's the thing. The, why these movies are funny is because they're trying to make a good movie and they fail in some fashion and it's always hilarious. Right. You know, it's terrible acting and bad special effects and you know, and, and like I said, this is nothing but celebrity cameos and 
Phoebe wasn't there. I don't know celebrities. So I didn't know who half these people were. Right. Were, like, that's one thing she's really good at because we watched the third one together. And I was like, oh, that's so and so from this show. She watches, like, a lot of reality TV and stuff. I don't watch that stuff. So yeah. she watches a lot of things on that Bravo channel. <laughs> so, like, oh, that's Real Housewife from Miami. We're like, oh, I don't even know what that is, you know? So, um, but it, it's, it was fucking hard. It was terrible. Uh, I'm hoping they. I'm wondering if they're going to make another one. I don't know. There's, I, are you familiar with that? Isn't Asylum involved? Well, I was about to talk about that because I don't know if you're familiar with that website, Crack.com. Yeah, oh, I, okay. uh, we have listeners who yeah. write for Crack.com. Uh, Crack.com is a great website. Their articles are fascinating. There's an article on there, and I don't remember the title off the top of my head, but it's a guy and him and his writing partner, and they wrote a movie that you've actually heard of. We're trying more or less is just to see if they could do it. Write a movie for the asylum, right? So it's about things we learned trying to write a movie for the asylum. The asylum number one does not make a movie unless they pre-sold it, right? So like if Sci-Fi Channel is going to buy it or a DVD or something like that, they will only make a movie that someone else gives them the money to make. Number two is they take this stuff seriously, like they're you know they take it really seriously. The guy was talking about all the stuff he was pitching, right? And they're like, no, 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 this isn't serious enough. Like really, <laughs> yeah. And they wanted to pitch something called Flying Sharks. I'm like, oh yeah, because that's a serious idea, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but well, that's that's what Jesus and I ran into yeah. with uh, Neander Zombie, right? Which it was we've too, talked about on previous episodes. It was too intelligent, yeah. for the Sci-Fi Channel. A Sci-Fi Channel years ago did some research and they discovered that if they spent money on something and to make it good, or they just made like Lava Lanchula, it got the same ratings. Right. So they just started making these movies. They pay about $2 million to make these movies, um, which is not a lot of money in Hollywood terms. Right. I mean, Lombardo, if you give Lombardo $2 million, you know, he can make like Star Wars, you know, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But they, they you know, it, it's, they're trying to make a cult thing and it's just not working. And like I said, this movie is seriously, it's unwatchable. If you've not seen it, don't waste your time. It's terrible. Well, I am stunned. I am stunned by your review. Yeah. No. I, I look at my notes. I still had two pages to go here because I figured we were going to have a big debate. And I was going to tell you, you're never allowed to make fun of me for watching Days of Our Lives again, because that plot sounds like a Days of Our Lives. It, it was, yeah, it was pretty much. Uh, they turned Tara Reid, because she got crushed by the space shuttle, they turned her into a robot. They, she can fly. It was like, it was like... It was like a sixth grader wrote this. It was like ridiculous. I'm just like sitting there watching this. So Dungeon Master would have been all over this movie. I, that, I think that I think he'd enjoy it because it's about his level. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, and I, I, Dungeon Master is actually really smart, so <laughs> I, he might not enjoy it. Uh, he's seriously for like he's eight. He's eight. He's a really smart kid. He, you know? His novel in there. Yeah. It's up to fifty eight pages. Yeah. No, that, 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 I'm not joking, people. This kid is like really, really. He's smarter than me, but that's not hard. It's not, he, it's really he, he as as he describes himself, he self describes himself as an evil genius. Yeah. No. Um, but he, like I said, I I enjoy these cheesy movies, like because I just like to laugh at them. You know, right. like Saturday night. Uh, Phoebe and I had classy taco night, right. and we watched uh, Three Headed Shark Attack, More Heads, More Deads, you know, right. which actually was terrible. Danny Trejo is in it. But now, this Three Headed Shark Attack was did the filmmakers take it seriously? Yeah, it, it, they're they're taking it seriously. Like okay. it's a shark with three heads, and you know, and 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 then we watched, uh, I think it was called. Chupacabra Dark Waters or something like that because it took place on a cruise ship and we're going on a cruise soon. <laughs> so we're like, well, we need to watch this. And that that was hilarious because they're on a cruise ship. And of course, these movies are really low budget. So I'm like, well, how are you going to do this? We're pretty sure they shot in a hotel. Yeah. You know? And then right away, they lock everybody, they tell everybody they have to lock themselves in a room so there's then nobody on the cruise ship. <laughs> you know? So that's how they save money. <laughs> it's just, it's that, actually really smart. Yeah. That, that movie was funny. We, we enjoyed that one. Um, the Three of Shark Attack was not very entertaining, but uh, it was okay. We were making fun of it. But um, but that's what we do. We sit there and we watch these things. And we, you know, I'm sure everybody does it. They watch it and do roof tracks and Mr. Science Theater in their own home. You know, right. which is kind of what we do. I don't take these movies serious at all. I don't think they're good movies. I never thought that, you know, anything in sci-fi channels is actually good. I will say sci-fi uh, has a reputation for showing crap. But in the last couple of years, they have really turned that channel around. They Some have. of their, their original shows they're doing now are amazing. The Expanse, honestly, other than Better Call Saul, is my favorite TV show. It's on the air right now. Really? Yes. Even more than season two of Mr. Robot. Yes. We'll wow. talk about that in That's a sec. A bold statement. Yeah. The Expanse is absolutely amazing. If you're not watching it, you need to fix that. Uh, I have not been watching it, but Phoebe loves 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys is really Yeah, good. I have not I seen that, that yet. Uh, we only saw the first episode because they ran it one night after The Expanse of The Magicians. Yeah. But we really like it. I have the rest of them on the DVR. We just haven't watched them yet. But that was really good. 
Um, there's other shows. You know, it's not just random stupid crap anymore. I kind of wish they would turn that focus where they decide, oh, we're going to make good shows now, to the movies. Right. I mean, occasional cheesy movie is fine, but I, th- I think I kind of like to see them, you know, try to make some good movies for a change. Right. Not everything they make is good. That uh, they did uh, Childhood's End as a miniseries. Yeah. That was fucking awful. Yeah. Now Phoebe liked it, but she never read the book, <laughs> so I was like, no, this is terrible. Um, but I, I kind of like to see them shift their focus. And, like, if we're going to make a movie, let's. Try to occasionally make one you put some effort into. But I'm also kind of like, I like the fact, you know, because The Expanse is based on a series of books. The Magicians is a book. Yeah. A lot of these books you cannot adapt into a two-hour movie. No. So I kind of like that they're doing it as a series. So that that kind of thing. But you'll never hear me say Sharknado is quality entertainment. Um, it's, it's mildly amusing. I think, honestly, if you want to watch Sharknado... I believe you can get the the soundtrack, the riff track soundtrack for both the first two. Watch that. Really? <laughs> because, yes. Okay. The, I'm telling you, the riff tracks for the second Sharknado is amazing. Like you'll hurt yourself laughing. It's so funny. Well, maybe we'll do that one. Yeah. Night. But you watch cheesy movies too. I know for a fact. Uh, do you? Uh, yes. Cannibals versus Adam and Eve, or whatever Adam that was. Adam and Eve versus the cannibals. Yeah. Um, Attack of the Beast creatures, but but they're know. fun to watch, right? Right. They're but, not good movies. But the key is, yeah. as you said, the filmmakers were very earnest right. about it. They took it seriously. That's why Plan 9 you know? from Outer Space works as a comedy, because yeah. that Ed Wood was trying to make a serious movie. And I am here to tell people, now, you know, I'm a big fan of Robot Monster and Plan 9 from Outer Space and all these, but if you have not seen Attack of the Beast Creatures, you need to unfuck that. <laughs> Attack of the Beast Creatures is amazing. Because it, it puts those films to shame. Yeah, it makes it makes Robot Monster look like you know Academy Award winning Yeah, and, and it was made in the eighties. Yeah. that's that's the most amazing part of it. You know, it, <laughs> you think they would have learned? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm surprised. Uh, what what do you think about Mr. Robot season two? Without Mr. Robot, spoilers. Okay, I've we've only watched the first two episodes, which oh, okay. they ran back to back one night. I'm up to episode four. Okay. Uh, we love it. Oh yeah, I love that show. Anyway, um, the the Two things happened at the end of the second episode that were, like, amazing. So I'm not going to say a word about There's something Christian Slater says to Elliot in episode two. Mm-hmm. It's a one-off line. Um, I think I know what I'm trying say. to do it without spoilers or for yeah. to ruin it for people who still have not seen season one. Right. Uh, when he tells Elliot who to... Who do you think they see? Meaning other people, right? Yeah. As as big of a shocker as season one's finale is, I suspect season two is going to flip the script. On I think end. so too. Yeah. And I think you know where I'm going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. I I love this show. It's 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 a great show. If you've not seen season one, we talked about it before in the show. I went into it. I knew nothing about it other than my ex wife Mary it was like, "Have you seen that Mr. Robot show? It's really good." I'm like, okay, I, I haven't seen it. And we started watching it on On Demand, and we watched like six episodes in a row. Like, we just couldn't turn it off, right? right. Me and Phoebe. We were both like, holy crap, this is good. How's this on USA? Because, like, yeah. USA shows are pretty much, they're all the same show. What amazed me this season, <laughs> using real footage of Obama and Leon Panetta, yeah. you know, former CIA mm-hmm. director, and all these other real politicians in real time. Yeah. Um, just such clever usage of those news clips, and the 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 vocal tweaking they mm-hmm. must have done in the studio to make it match what's going on in the show it just just blew me away. You know, I I say you know anybody out there who like me you know as Dave likes to say paranoid Pete, um, you know we were all so disappointed when Jericho went off the air. But I'm here to tell you this is a normal people won't understand, but anybody who loved Jericho as much as I do, this is a spiritual successor to Jericho. I can see that. I, I like yeah. I like Jericho. I just pretend they only made that one season. I, I like season two <laughs> as well. Oh, uh, no. I, no. Did you ever read the comic books for season no, three I have not. and season four? It's, no. it's written by the creators. Right. I, I yeah. know they did comics. I've never seen them. It got good. Yeah, okay. You know, my, my problem with the second season was only six episodes, and they like, compressed the story so much that... Um, you know, that not as bad as what I think is going to happen to Game of Thrones. Um, but yeah. <laughs> they've already announced. Uh, we'll save that for yeah, next week's show. I was going to say quick, there's only 13 episodes left, and yep. I'm like, I don't think this is going to end well. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, Mr. Robot is amazing. Uh, so, yeah, which is good because there's nothing on to watch right now. So 
that's about it. Yeah. You know? so I will say I... We're going to watch... Uh, Mary and I are going to watch Green Room, and we're going to binge watch Stranger Things this week. Now, have you watched Stranger Things yet? Okay. That, I was going to ask you about this, because... Much like Pokemon Go, everyone on Earth is watching Stranger Things and raving about it. Right. I have a feeling I'm going to hate it because I hate nostalgia. I have a feeling I'm going to like it. Um, uh, you, I think you will like it. I, I will say I've not seen a frame of it. We are going to watch it at some point. Um, but I keep saying 80s nostalgia, 80s nostalgia, 80s nostalgia. Now, I graduated from high school in 1980. Right. So I did not grow up as like a kid or a teenager. I'm a little older. Um I have no affection for most 80s things like the Goonies or E.T. or, you know, any of that stuff. It just does not resonate with me at all. So I have a feeling that I saw Jeff Burke uh, say that he watched the first episode and couldn't get into it. Right. And Jeff and I often agree on entertainment. Not right. always because he likes he, – he is more a fan of really, really violent Horror films right. than I am, um, but so I don't even. Well, yeah, think, I mean he's the senior editor, right? At Dead Dead he likes the hardcore. Yeah, you know? I, I'm not really a hardcore fan, but some of the, a lot of the other things he watches, like when he posts a movie review, I always read it because I find out a lot of small independent movies I never heard of. I had never heard of that movie Spring, for example, until I saw he reviewed it, right? And talked about it, and that's still like I, I don't think I've seen a better movie than that in the last oh, two Spring years. Spring was amazing. Yeah. So. Um, I always read his reviews, and I like I said, I often agree with him. And he did not. He, I think he watched one episode. And was like, this is not for me. Yeah, I'll give it a shot, but I'm really worried, especially because often when everyone is raving about something, that's typically something I don't like. Just right. me. But I'll give it a shot. I'm curious to hear your opinion. Well, of it. Why don't we both plan on watching at least a few episodes this week? Right. Like I said, Mary and I are going to try to binge watch it this weekend. Maybe you can watch like the pilot. I was going to say, I maybe we can watch two episodes. All right. We have a busy weekend. Uh, as you know, we are finally recording the Phoebe and Lombardo Book Club episode this yes, weekend. Yes, which will the, air in two weeks. Two weeks, uh, yes. It'll air August 18th. Yes. So we're finally going to get that recorded, and I'm hoping this goes well. <laughs> it's Lombardo, so who knows? Oh, what could go wrong? What oh, could possibly go everything. Wrong? <laughs> he can take his pants off. I <laughs> 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 Phoebe will punch him. <laughs> so that might be an end, quick end of the episode. Right, well, let, let's plan on at least. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll basically. give it a shot, and because uh, she, she asked me, like, you know, if we were gonna watch it, and I'm like, we have to have time. Here comes the goddamn llama. Oh, oh, yeah, he's, he's, well, we're uh, almost done. Anyway. Yeah, we're almost done. So uh, <laughs> not too much more reaction today, but uh, yeah, we'll give it a shot, and then we can talk about it on next week's show. All right. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we close out for the week? I'm trying to think. Um, Save it for next week. Yes. <laughs> because the lawnmower is getting louder. Yeah. All right. One more time. This week's episode was brought to you by Chills. C-H-I-L-L-S. Um, I don't know why I spelled that. <laughs> I'm tired and the show's coming to an end. But yes, Chills by Mary San Giovanni. S-A-N-G-I-O-V-A-N-N-I. I better know how to fucking spell that. You right? better. You're going to get in some trouble um, if you don't spell that correctly. Described by reviewers as True Detective meets H.P. Lovecraft, it's available for pre-order now in paperback and on Kindle. It releases next month from Kensington Books. Thanks to them for sponsoring this week's show. Uh, if there's something you want us to talk about, hit us up on Twitter, Facebook, or our website, thehorrorshow at briankeen.com. Although, i got to be honest, folks, I haven't checked our Twitter feed in like two months. I should probably make a an effort to do that this week. I, I've been traveling. Right. I, I haven't had time. Um, the Horror Show is available on iTunes, Android, Roku, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and all their platforms via Project iRadio to advertise on The Horror Show. Send an email to the horror show with Brian Keen at Outlook.com, and I will get you in touch with Dave, and he will work out something that will get you results and meet your budget. Absolutely. I'll tell you, and it isn't just me saying this. You advertise on the show. Again, I heard from people at Scares and Cares who run ads. Everybody was like, I sold a ton of books the week you guys ran my ad. Yeah. Thank you. So oh, There you go. Yeah. There you go. You know what we should do? We should get some advertiser testimonials. Absolutely. That was something I was going to work on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's probably something the listeners don't need to hear us. No, but that's okay. Battling about. <laughs> yeah. Rattling about. Yeah. Fucking beat, man. 
I forgot how exhausting recording this show is. You got to get you know, back into podcasting shape. I am. <laughs> I need to. All right. Next week, Nick Mamatas coming up on the 18th, the Phoebe and Lombardo Book Club. And on August 25th, Gene O'Neill with special guest host Michael Bailey filling in for Dave. Um, we will see you next week, folks. Bye. Hey, folks. This is Brian. Um, yes, we know the show is over, so why am I still talking to you? Well, for the four of you who are still listening, uh, we wanted to remind you once again about Project iRadio's patron campaign. That's www.patreon.com slash Project iRadio. Go there and you can support the network and support this show and all the other great shows uh, that Project iRadio brings you every week. Once again, that's patron.com slash Project iRadio.